Well, hey there, and welcome to Hey Paula, Help Me With My DIY Project. I'm Paula Blankenship, and I am with my co-host, Melissa Osborne. Today, we have a great topic for you. And if you are an advocate of the Facebook Marketplace, I think you may enjoy this. We're going to give you some great tips on how to be a better shopper for great deals you might find on Marketplace. Sometimes, how do you find those good pieces? Because sometimes they're hard to find. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes I go in there and I go, well, there's nothing on here. <laughs> you just ain't searching, Nobody's right? <laughs> not got a thing. I won't. Well, then I realize my search terms are probably a little skewed. So, um, knowing that a human who put their pieces on to Marketplace is not always a, let's say, Facebooker and uh, doesn't really think of in, in the terms of someone finding it always, I always go back and say, hey, what have I searched for here? Is my category too broad? So if you, uh, some of this information may be redundant to some of you out there who may be really, really some great. Some of you really need it though, probably. Some people probably would benefit from some of this information. So I hope it's you. Before we go too much further, let's read a review. Someone oh, yes. left us here and uh, I'll go ahead and let you take it from here. So it looks like a good one. Yeah, it's a... Uh... The one thing I hate about podcasts is they don't make people leave their actual name. So, <laughs> this is from Am I maybe Mimi X6? I'm going to say that's what she it is. She knows who she is. She knows who she is. Listen, Mimi is a one lady, but it could be. No. <laughs> and uh, we're going to assume she says, Thank you for creating this podcast forum. I love that if I'm listening and I have to leave the house for some reason, I can finish listening in the car. Can't do that on a Facebook Live. Nope. Uh, or I can put in my AirPods and listen while I'm busy doing other things. It's great ideas and helpful hints. Awesome. So glad you are enjoying it, and I hope you are enjoying it as well. Please leave us a review. Someone's going to win $25. Just like Mimi did here. Mimi, if you will send Melissa at htpaint.com an email, she'll send you your link so you can claim your $25 gift certificate to allinonepaint.com. So, all right, let's get right into the meat yeah. of this and see what we can help these folks with figuring out something, how to buy things on the marketplace. And, yeah, because uh, it's so hard to get furniture right now. We hard. all just have to trade right now. That's, that's, that's our best of, bet yeah, right now. That's true. Uh, right now, if you did go into a new store and order, heaven forbid, how long it would take you to wait to get it. So everybody's budget conscious right now, you know, with inflation where it is and uh, everything at hand with gas prices, food prices, everything going through the roof. Crazy. Uh, a tampon shortage of all things uh, now. How could that be? <laughs> Along with the baby formula. Those yeah. two things go hand in hand. Let me see. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's uh, not go down that road. <laughs> Jared's going to have fun editing We're going to take that out, probably so. So, um, yeah. yeah, we do leave in the stu stupid stuff. Uh, but, uh, yes, and Marketplace is a great place. You know, used to Craigslist was where everybody went to buy everything, you know, the and Marketplace just kind of squashed them. And I love it because it's so easy and search terms are easy, but remember there aren't categories necessarily. They're broad categories it's on just furniture. Furniture. All right. Furniture. Something that has changed recently, if you haven't shopped on Marketplace in a while, it does allow you to say local only, not local and shipping. So make sure that whenever you are searching immediately on the Marketplace app, as soon as you go in the very top, you'll be able to push a little button and it gives you the radius just like it used to. But just go ahead and push local only. That means you can drive and pick it up within whatever parameter you have set there on That's your That's where you can get the best deal. That's where you can at least go out and see it, get it, and, um, you know, within whatever terms, again, you've set one hour or 60 minutes, miles, or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, what's, so what's our best tips about searching? So you mentioned keeping the terms maybe more broad. So kind of have to outthink the lister, right? You do have to outthink the lister. And this goes for eBay and any site that you're searching on. Remember, a human entered it. So they're going to be thinking in human terms and not necessarily as you would be as an algorithm expert or a meta tag expert. So and maybe I, not the same terms you're thinking. Nope, that's exactly right. So if I'm looking for a sofa, remember, not everybody calls a sofa a sofa. Not everybody calls Perfectly. it a couch. You know, <laughs> you're going to have to think like that. You're going to have to think, well, okay, what should I put in here? So search for sofa, if that's what you think. And then also search for the word couch. That's going to give you two different listers. Uh, you might also be thinking of a verb in front of that, leather couch, leather sofa. So when you put those two words together, I normally search for, if I'm looking for, let's say, upholstery, a leather piece that uh, we would be wanting to paint using all in one paint. I would search just the word leather because I'm going to take a peek at everything on there that's leather in my local area. It may be that someone 
uh, was going to describe their upholstered piece with the word leather, simply because that is a pretty specific thing. If I've got a chair, I could at least know that most people are going to describe that chair as leather, vinyl, most of the time they're going to call vinyl and leather, leather, regardless, even if they know or don't know. Um, if it looks like it's wipeable, it's going to be called leather. leather. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, don't get down to the finite details of leather vinyl at this point. Just search for the word leather and then put the word chair in there. And that means it's going to pull up. Um, maybe that's what you're looking for, a leather chair. You may find a recliner. You may find a an occasional chair that doesn't function at all. You may find... If you're looking for chair ottoman, go ahead and put the word ottoman in there, but some people call it a footstool. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's going to call it something different. So, um, so real broad strokes first. To start broad with. strokes first. And the way I like to also think about it is sometimes uh, brands being brand specific. If you know you like certain styles, if you say you like um, Pottery Barn and, and you like Our House and you like Restoration Hardware, great to just search those brand names. Outside of that, I don't really search brand names, but uh, I like to see what someone has listed on there as a Pottery Barn. Uh, maybe someone who's had a lot of Pottery Barn pieces in their home. I know they're going to be timely. Even though Pottery Barn has been around for several years, some people are getting tired of those old things they bought. They may be ready to slough them off. Might be your uh, great find out there to take a peek at what they have because sometimes they don't change the style a whole lot. That's one thing about them. They're kind of in the mainstream because they're in the middle. They're not uber uh, they're more of eclectic. There's traditional and uh, also modern, so they're transitional to me. So if there is a piece of Pottery Barn, it's going to be textured, it's going to be neutral tones, it's going to be kind of uh, not too ornate on the carving side, let's say as far as the table goes, it's going to be pretty plain. So that means it can fit right into pretty much any genre of interior. So The great thing barn. about searching by a brand name that you love too is that, you know, I might be on there looking for an accent table. That's but I right. might run across a great deal on a curtain, on a drape. That's right, that you weren't even expecting. But, so, but it might be the deal of the century, and now yeah. i got to have it because it's Pottery Barn. I know darn well that costs a lot of money new, Yes, and I'm right. getting a deal. And now, again, you found a great uh, value add for your home, mm -hmm. and you found it at somewhere you can go drive and pick it up and look at it and that kind of thing, too. Yeah. Check so, the quality. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, if it's Pottery Barn, it's going to be pretty good quality. That's one thing about, you know, I shop online for clothes, and I shop by brands, and I uh, buy, I go to eBay. And I only buy brands that I know. If I step outside of that and buy a brand just because I think I like the looks of it, I'm always pretty much count on it being disappointed in the way it fits yep. or the quality of it or something. So if I buy the brands I love, I'll search for Chico's. I like soft surroundings. Um, some of those things, if I search for those brands, I already know the size I wear and pretty much it'll be just spot on. So it's an easy way. She's Same got alerts with that go off on her phone. Every time a Chico something pops up, she's on it, buddy. Now alerts are something you can set, but good thing you mentioned that. Now, if you're looking for a specific item on Marketplace, you can set alerts. Like if you like oh, antiques, yeah, you sure can. Huh? So, uh, you know, with the market being so hot right now and people are refurbishing and, uh, painting furniture, making a living, um, supplementing their living right now by painting furniture. They're all looking for things on Marketplace. So it's great that you can set an alert and uh, reach out to that seller first, because if you don't, it won't be there. If you think you're going to wait a couple hours, it'll already be gone. There'll be 25 people have it saved, and four people on the way. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, we see that all the time. I and think too, you have to be willing to especially on a really good deal. You have to be willing to kind of pay up front and take, mm. take a little bit of a risk. You do. You can do it through Facebook where you're protected. Venmo, um, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Venmo is a great way to pay people. And uh, of course you can do it through PayPal too. So I mean, whatever your seller takes, obviously. Most people want cash though. So mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. Uh, yeah. You just have to move quick, make a commitment and get in the line first. So yeah. if you're not already on Marketplace, most of y'all already know all this info. So what else we got there? Um, so you talked about looking for styles, like for styles. provincial. Yeah, styles. So pigeonholed into styles. If you know a style that you're looking for, there again, let's go back, restoration hardware and those things. Pretty much those are indicative of a certain style. But if you really know a period of, say, you're looking for a sofa that would be a, a tufted back sofa, you want something traditional like that. So Chesterfield is the brand, or not the brand, but the style name of that type of a sofa. And if you have a Chesterfield sofa, you know exactly what that is. So if you're looking for one, 
Just search the word Chesterfield. Most people who have one know what it is. They know it's an old English pub type style sofa and uh, very important and always going to be in style classic forever. Style. Very classic, yes. French provincial. If you have French style furniture, uh, period French style, French provincial furniture, you know that too. If you're looking for something in that vein, search those terms because people who are selling them also know that. Also the word antique, let's talk about that. A lot of people want to paint older furniture, but you know, I'm to be 60 in February. So an antique to me is something that they say generally 20 years younger than you. Well, I can tell you now something from the eighties is not an antique. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not valued like an no. antique for sure. <laughs> we see in our Facebook group all the time, there's about 400,000 users of All In One Paint that are in our private Facebook group. And so many young people that are in there will say, well, this is an antique. Well, to them, it is an antique. Uh, you know, they're probably 25, 30 years old. They're looking at something from they the 80s we're an and 90s. We are antiques. <laughs> <laughs> we are. But what classifies an antique is being mass produced. If furniture is mass produced in a production line in uh, North Carolina, you know, whatever the brand name might be, it is not an antique. An antique means something that's very rare, something that was built by hand most of the time. You'll see dovetail drawers. You'll see uh, different styles of the backs. The back panels generally are put together with planks. They're not big one piece of plywood stapled on the back. That's a sign of a mass produced piece of furniture. Generally, if you'll see a stamp on the inside, that's not a um, antique. So if you search word, the word antique on the marketplace, that's going to be the person who lists it, idea, is it an antique or not? So it's kind of fun sometimes to look at what people think are antiques. <laughs> Little people watching <laughs> on the Facebook marketplace. Yeah, I actually do look at them because sometimes there will be some actually true old furniture in there. So I doubt many people list their items as old furniture. Uh, probably there are people who would list it as old they furniture. Might. Old junk. Mm -hmm. Come get this old junk. <laughs> Go on today. Yeah. Uh, they do that. <laughs> free. Free furniture. Come get it. And you might find something really awesome in that. But uh, You know, I will say, everything I've ever listed for free on Facebook Marketplace, I've had to work so hard to get rid of. Probably. That's they weird. will wear you out if you're trying to give something mm -hmm. away. I saw an old Donato. I'd, I'd rather sell it for $10. I saw a guy say he set a couch on the uh, side of the street and put free to take it. Mm -hmm. Nobody took it for days. I'm sure it rained on it and whatever. And so he put a sign on the uh, on the couch, $100 for sale for $100. It was stolen overnight. <laughs> 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 so yeah, there you go. It's perceived value, yeah, right? Right. Um, all right. So what's your next one okay. here? Okay. Um, we got that leather. One. Leather. Yes, leather. If you are looking for true leather today, it's very difficult for people to define what. Yeah. They how can we know if they say it's leather? Ugh. How can we tell that? Can we tell that? Well, is that, that important picture? to you? It probably is. If you're thinking about painting, and of course you know our paint paints leathers and vinyls, so it's really kind of a you know a no-brainer. It will paint leather or vinyl, but uh, you want something that's going to be worthy of you painting it. Vinyl is not always worthy of being painted. Right. And especially if they're asking, you know, several hundred dollars right. for something used, you want to know. If, uh, that's true. If it's got that. And I'm going to give you that. If it's leather, it's going to warrant that because leather also is going to perform better if it's being painted uh, versus vinyl because vinyl sometimes has a tendency for the top layer to come off, delaminate, and start peeling when that's happening. Uh, you have to kind of do a whole lot of work to make that worth your while. So it's one of those things you have to decide, is it worthy of you painting it or not? But now leather, that is a different story. If you can find true leather online on Marketplace, great opportunity to uh, turn something that might have been an old sow's ear into a silk purse. <laughs> you love that uh, thing. I do. It's a good one. I so if we it. see in the pictures that it's peeling, flaking, any of that, then obviously it's not real leather. That's exactly right. Yeah, real leather amazing. does not peel, flake, or crack. So if now, it can crack if it gets extremely dry. I'm talking about something that's a hundred years old, but real leather doesn't crack. Um, no matter if it hasn't been conditioned and all those things that people seem to think they rub on leather to make them conditioned. Um, so if you see cracking, peeling, delaminating, flaking, all those things, those are not real leathers. The way you can normally decide if something's real leather, here's one fast, fast rule. Real leather generally does not recline. It doesn't have a recliner in it. If you see something that's a reclining sofa, love seat, sectional, generally those are called leather and leather match, meaning everywhere your hand touches, where you sit, that's going to be leather. The sides will be vinyl. The back panel will be vinyl. That's a leather, leather match. Those will be brands like Lazy Boy, Ashley, Lane. Um, Lane made some higher end things, but Lane's in that category. Anything that was considered um, motion furniture, they, don't, they do not use full 
hide leathers. So they try to keep the cost down because you're buying something large and they're still expensive regardless. But um, the mechanism is what you're paying the, for there. You're paying for that size. You're buying really two sofas, two couches, sometimes a bed, sometimes a corner piece. I mean, those, if they're all leather, you'll see brands like um, certain ones, Braddington Young, that has some reclining mechanisms built into them, Natuzzi leather. Those will all be normally all full top grain leather, corrected to hide top grain leathers, but that's rare. You're ever going to see one online. And if you do, somebody's going to be asking a lot of money for it. So yeah, if it, if they're saying it's genuine leather and they're getting rid of it for a hundred dollars, no, it's not genuine. That leather. will not be. So price will reflect that. They are not that, that gen generous. Right. Uh, the names, the brands, you'll know those, but those quick names I gave you right there, that's the mass majority of what you'll see out there. And that would be, you know, Lazy Boy Ashley. Um, those will not be the higher quality leathers ever used in those that I've ever seen. Ever. Is there a way we can tell from the stitching if we can zoom in on the photo? No, you can't no. tell from no. the stitching. They'll all be baseball stitched regardless, but some, some of them make really good looking vinyls and some hold up pretty good. Mm -hmm. I would take Ashley out of that category. Uh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. Everybody knows that. We've all bought one, right? Uh, no, and I used to sell Ashley, so I apologize if you ever bought one from me. So My sorry. husband sat on a plane next to somebody like an owner or higher up or on the board or something and Ashley he gave him an earful about the couch we bought for <laughs> join the club probably, they probably could not wait to get off that join plane. the club uh -huh. probably on that one um yeah I'm sure they had lots of uh issues going forward whenever mm -hmm. all that leather or vinyl started failing for them through the years yeah. if uh, you have an RV almost everything RVs. in an RV absolutely not real same thing yeah all bycast that's a bycast is akin to plywood so Whenever you see um, that stiff looking leather, it's all baseball stitch, really pretty. When you see it, it's new it's in a lot of motorhomes and it looks perfect. When you start sitting on it, it just starts peeling and coming loose. It won't be long, that whole backing's exposed. You can paint that backing once you peel all that off and make it look livable. Mm -hmm. But um, to say it's gonna look perfect again, not happening. I always say, think of it like if leather was a chicken nugget, it's little ground up pieces of something it's in plywood, there. plywood, just like mixed plywood. In, yeah. yeah, mixed with glue it's and then it's come pressed apart pressed down and glued on to a backing and they call it bicast. And uh, bicast is just what I call the lowest of the low of vinyl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the last thing we had was don't worry about the color because we can obviously paint sure. it. So yeah. don't worry about color. Don't worry about color. Buy good wood structured furniture and or good leather either or if you're buying upholstery buy leather uh, you can always change the color of it you can also paint smooth fabrics so meaning smooth fabrics without texture without a risen or visible texture if you feel texture to them fuzzy hairy anything or anything that sticks up like a brocade or even sometimes uh, embroidered type fabrics have a stiffening to them because of that but if you find a good cotton a chance some sort of a smooth fabric. It's going to paint great. Silk. It's going to, yeah, silk's going to look great and going to paint and feel, it will st always still feel painted. You can't remove that part, but uh, it's definitely livable. So people literally give upholstery away because they don't know what else to do with it. And it costs so much to recover it. And people just don't go down that path any longer. Yeah. Um, so think in terms of painting it and uh, finding good pieces on there better than you can even go out and buy today on Marketplace. Absolutely. So and I you hope, won't have to wait nearly as no, long. <laughs> just go get it. The only thing you, only problem I know you have right here today is finding your husband and a truck and two guys maybe to get you to get it into the house. That's the only problem I know you have because she and I face the same issue. Yep. <laughs> is getting the manpower to help yep. you go move mm -hmm. it unless you want to get in there and struggle and, and getting them motivated to move as fast as you got to move on yes the, <laughs> to that's <get> the <laughs> problem right there that's the only downfall i can see we can't it. solve that for you we yeah. don't have any tips on that no wish we did i i'm Beg. trying to look for that <laughs> there's a marketplace guy that's going to put himself up here for hire who says i've got a truck girls just call there me there you go and there you go two guys in a truck we call this two two men and a truck for marketplace <laughs> <laughs> Facebook <topic>. business <laughs> idea right there 101 all right guys uh we hope this has been informative to you and you've got something valuable from this in our podcast here with hey paula help me with my diy project don't forget to leave us a review and come back and see us again right here this same time next week we'll be posting another episode here for you hope you all have a great one take care of yourself see bye ya.